Hey, hello everybody. I'm going to showcase in this video how to utilize a cooldown feature in any type of script. Uh, this is mostly going to be an explanation video as I already have a script set, but this you can just follow what my advice and follow this and add it to your own scripts. It's super simple. It's way less complicated than it actually than you think it is. Uh, so let me ex so let me explain how a cooldown works before I get into the script. So basically how, how a cooldown works is the player joins and a cooldown value is set immediately once he joins. And you get the cooldown in this video is going to be set at false. So the player joins and the cooldown will be set at false the moment he joins the game. And so when he equips said tool, let's say I've, I'm using my katana. So when he equips the katana, then he then the cooldown can work. So let's say he joins, the, the cooldown is already at, fa uh, at false, but he equips the katana, he does an action, in this case an attack, and the cooldown now gets set to true. And then he waits a period and it gets set back to false so he can use it again. That's basically all it is. It's super simple. So I'm now going to explain. This is my script. It uh, you utilizes the cooldown feature and an attack. You can copy this if you want. I'm going to paste it uh, in the description. You can copy it from there. Uh, so it needs to be a local script that you put in your katana. This can work for any kind of tool. It also works for my tool that I explained in my tutorial. It doesn't matter, it just put it in a tool and it works. It also, uh, I think you can also use it on something that isn't a tool, but I recommend having it as a tool that's just easier, but yeah, whatever you like. But so how it works is we first need an animation that is going to be the animation that is going to play when he does an attack let's say so we call it at we I just I will call it anim and we show that it is an animation instance and then we show then we tell the script what ID it has so anim animation ID and then we have the asset ID and then here you can paste whatever whichever ID you're going to use and uh, that's all for the anim we're going to get back at the track later and then we start off so th this all all this starts the moment the player joins so from the moment the player joins the cooldown will also be set at false that means he can use the attack and so we're going to to make it easier to show for us the developer to sh see if the script is working i have a printing feature which just prints cooldown false to show the cooldown is now set at false you can remove this if everything is working fine if you want to keep it keep it whatever you like it doesn't matter it's not important so then we're going to do the local key and that's a user input input servers so let me explain a bit so if a player presses a key something need sometimes something needs to happen and we want something to happen when the player presses a certain key so the moment so we use this to detect if if a player presses a key so as you can see here it key dot input began dot connect function input so it go it's looking for an input in a key but it doesn't know which key yet we that's why we put the input feature and so if a player presses a key any key on the keyboard it's going to look is the cooldown false if it is false what what then it's going to go to the next line is the key that is pressed and i have it set at r so it's going to look is the key that is pressed an r if it is an r it's going to continue down the chain if it isn't it's going to return back to the top and nothing happens but if it is an R, it's going to go to the track. The, now we set the track on an, we set the track to load an animation on humanoid, so the player does the animation. So it loads an animation, and we set it to anim. So the track, this track is now connected to this anim. So when you play, so when you pl play the track, it plays this animation. So 
we next set up the priority. So this is an action. This is an attack. So we set it at action. Uh, if you have it for some reason on a movement ability or something, you can, uh, as you can see here, you can set it to movement or you have all the values here, but we're going to keep it at action. If you're wondering what these other are, these other actions are, two, three, four, it's basically attack four has the highest priority, as you can see, overriding all other priority values, but that's only if you have multiple attacks, then you can utilize action. But for now, it just basic action is fine. And then it plays the track, so it plays this animation. And then we switch the cooldown to true because he now did the attack so it's now at, at true then it's going to print it out to us in the output section to say hey the player did the attack it's now the cooldown has now activated and then you simply I set it to five seconds so the player waits five seconds then print false and then cooldown gets it to false so you can change this to one or zero for some reason but you can change this, ch change this to any type keep in mind though these are seconds so tr uh, keep in mind just change it to whatever you like i have it at five five is fine for me and then it prints and goes back to false so the player can use the attack again after waiting five seconds. But let's say the player doesn't meet this value. What happens now? Then we, then the cool actual cooldown utilization comes into place. So if the player doesn't meet, let's say, meet this value, we have to put an else for else from let's say. Okay, so the script reads this as from. Okay, he pressed the button. Okay, the cooldown is false. But hey, he didn't meet this. He didn't press R. What happens now? You can't. They can't follow this anymore because they didn't meet this. So this is where you have an else feature. If you don't have this, this won't work. Uh, and that, so it goes back to false. So he didn't. If he didn't, let's say, press R, this d never happened. So the att he didn't do the attack. So that's why we put it at false. Because because otherwise, if you put it at true, he's going to press something. He's going to press something, and the cooldown will get activated, even though he never did it. So we need to keep this at false, and then we simply return back to the beginning. So after this chain is completed, it goes back to the beginning, and it basically put, gets put onto a loop. So I'm going to showcase how. It actually works if you do not have output on you can go to view and press output to turn it on so you can see the printing messages so let's go to play and so here's my character so they have the tool open you can see cooldown is set to false so I can equip my tool and I can press R and it's now set to true I did the animation and it is true and then you wait a couple of seconds and it is back to false and now I can use it again while it's true as you can see I cannot use the animation on I cannot use the attack until it's back to false and then I can do it again and if you're here as you can see I can press R the alt whole time nothing happens I can equip it again and it gets set back to true so this is works perfectly fine no issues if you do actually have an issue Feel free to join the Discord also in the comments. I'll put my Discord in the description and comment section if needed. Join it, go to the help section. Either I will help you or someone else in my Discord uh, who has the time can help you. And we will help you to solve the issue basically. If you have any other issues not related to my videos, just general other scripting issues, modeling issues, anything, feel free to join the Discord too. I will be glad to help you. Other, there are plenty of other people who will also be glad to help you with your issues. And that's basically it. I'm The next video also is going to be a detailed, uh, advanced modeling video on explaining how to basically model something like this in studio. Not in uh, Blender, just in studio. How to model this. I have a couple of uh, different swords here. I, I don't know if you can see them. Yeah, I, wait, I can uh, I can simply copy this here, as you can see, 
how to model a somewhat detailed uh, yeah a somewhat detailed uh, sword here's a different type of sword as you can see uh, that's going to be the next video uh, I will put when the video gets uploaded I will post it in my discord and that's basically it also uh, if you're wondering about this what uh, this uh, design Oh, I'm a noob. If you want to know how this design where the character holds the tool without having it equipped, that's going to be my next upcoming video after I do the modeling video. Uh, but this entire kit is not yet finished because when you equip it, as you can see, it remains and it needs to be invisible, otherwise you have two swords and so you get it. But this is going to be my next next video and that's basically it. So. If you found that this helped you or something else, you can share it and feel free to subscribe. It's free. If you like to, you can. If you don't want to, it's fine. Uh, and that's that was that's that's it. Yeah. So thank you, and I'll see you in my next video.